Welcome to the Virginia Tech Intramural Sports 4-on-4 Flag Football Preseason Presentation. We are excited that you are a part of our Intramural Sports program and we look forward to working with you and your team this year. In this presentation, we will review general Intramural Sports policies, procedures, important sports rules, captain's responsibilities, sportsmanship, and more. As captains, it is your responsibility to share all of the information presented in this video with your teammates. Please feel free to send them the link to this presentation to view on their own time. We would like to thank Fox Ridge Apartment Homes for sponsoring this year's captain's presentations and for the coveted Intramural Sports Championship t-shirt that all team sports winners receive. As a team captain for your Intramural Sports team, it is important that you understand your role on your team and within the Intramural Sports program. You are responsible for the recruitment and organization of your team. Please make sure that all team members are eligible, are notified of the sports rules, intramural sports policies and procedures, any communication and information coming from the intramural sports office, and when and where they are scheduled to play. All information can be found on the intramural sports website and within the Fusion IM portal. Having all teammates' cell numbers and emails will help you to be able to communicate with them in a timely fashion and provide updates for everyone. As a team captain, you are responsible for being familiar with all intramural sports game rules, policies, and procedures, as well as representing your team when discussing rule interpretations and player eligibility with intramural staff. More information regarding captain's responsibilities can be found in the Intramural Sports Policy Manual located on the Intramural Sports website. At game time, all flag football teams need a minimum of three players to start the game. Teams with fewer than three players have a 10-minute grace period to get enough players checked in and on the field to play. All players must have an intramural full membership and be added to the team roster prior to the game starting. All players must be checked in with the intramural sports staff and show their Hokie passport. It is important for all team members to show up at least 15 minutes early to start the game on time. If one team is present at the start of the game and the opponent does not have the minimum number of players to play, the team present will have the option to play the game ahead by the score of the mercy rule for flag football. It is 19-0 in men's or women's or 25-0 in co-rec. The team may also elect to have the game started with a 0-0 score if the opponent shows up prior to the end of the grace period. After the grace period ends, teams without the required number will forfeit the game. A double forfeit is called if neither team has enough players present and checked in to start the game at the end of the grace period. Teams that forfeit will be removed from the league and may be replaced with a team from the waiting list if the team does not pay the forfeit reinstatement fee of $20 on Fusion IM within two days after the forfeit. Always show up for games unless you are contacted by the intramural sports office. If your team knows that you will not have enough players to play in a game, you can log into Fusion IM, click on the game in your schedule you wish to forfeit, and click on the forfeit button. This will notify our intramural sports office and your opponent that the game will not be played. We greatly appreciate you using this feature as early as possible to notify us of any forfeits for your team. Team Rosters Players may be added to the roster online on Fusion IM before or when they check in for a game. There is no game limit to set your team roster, so players can be added the entire season including playoffs. Many times there are free agents available to play and captains can find them on Fusion IM and invite those players to join their team at any time during the season. The intramural sports full membership must be purchased prior to registering a player to the roster. Players may only play on one men's or women's team and one co-rec or open team. Players are locked on the team roster three weeks after the season begins and players may not be removed to be added to another team after that third week of games. The roster restrictions for 4-on-4 four four flag football are as follows. A maximum of three varsity players that are non-football athletes are allowed to play per team. A maximum of three club rub rugby players is allowed per team with an unlimited amount of club players from other sports. Professional athletes are ineligible, and if you suspect that a player is ineligible, you may file a protest with the Intramural Sports Office. Player eligibility and rule misapplications are the only valid protests allowed. An eligibility protest may be made at any time before, during, or after a game, as well as any time during the sports season. A rule protest must be made prior to the restart of play, otherwise the request will be denied. 
the rural protest must be made immediately at the time of the official's call. Captains may file a formal protest in the Intramural Sports Office with a protest form in 135 War Memorial Hall by 12 o'clock p.m. the next day after the game is played with a $10 protest fee. If the protest was found to be correct, the fee will be refunded. If incorrect, the fee is lost. All league schedules, rosters, game results, and league information are posted on the Fusion IM portal. Log in to see your team and league information. We may contact teams to fill in spots if teams are dropped from the league, so please check your email regularly and respond to our messages when we ask you to. These games are extra games on top of what your team is originally scheduled for, so please still show up for your regularly scheduled games. The Intramural Sports Mission Statement says that it is the mission of the Intramural Sports Program under the Department of Recreational Sports at Virginia Tech to provide a wide range of individual and team activities at both a competitive and recreational level to students, faculty, staff, and other members of the university community. Our purpose is to provide exercise, recreation, and fun to our participants in a relaxed yet structured environment. Intramural sports are a crucial element of the student life experience because they promote and reinforce teamwork and personal accomplishment, mutual respect and integrity, competition and recreation, as well as skill and exercise. Everyone is encouraged to play to the best of their abilities. However, a win at all costs attitude is inappropriate and strongly discouraged. The genuine value of intramural sports comes from the opportunity to participate, not from winning. Sportsmanship involves respect for all participants, officials, scorekeepers, intramural sports supervisors, and fans. To encourage sportsmanship for all intramural sports activities, a team sportsmanship rating has been developed to encourage proper sporting behavior during all intramural contests. The rating is based on a five-point scale, and all teams must meet the minimum average sportsmanship rating of a 3.0 to be eligible for playoffs. This next section will go over the four-on-four -four flag football rules. Flag football is played with two teams of four players for men's and women's leagues. In Correc, the game is played with four players, having two men and two women, or a minimum of three players with a plus or one minus ratio. The game is played with four 10-minute quarters with a running clock, except for the clock stopping for the two-minute warning in each half and will restart on the snap. During the final two minutes of the game, the clock will stop on scores, penalties, out-of-bounds, first downs, possession changes, touchbacks, inadvertent whistles, and incomplete passes. Teams are allowed one 30-second timeout each half. Regular season games may end up in a tie, and the overtime rules will be posted online in the rules. Officials will conduct a coin toss prior to the game starting. The winning team has the option to start on offense, defense, defend a side of the field, or defer the option to the second half. Substitutions of players will occur in between downs. In Corec, the gender ratio must be maintained throughout the game. Play belts must be worn by all players during the game. It is each individual player's responsibility to secure their belt appropriately. Clip two ends together on the front side of your waist. One flag must rest on each hip and one flag in the back of your waist. Flag belts may not be tied. The result is an ejection in the game. Players cannot guard the flag with any hand, arm, or the ball. This will be considered a foul. There are no line requirements for the number of players lining up the, on the line of scrimmage. For passing and receiving, all players are eligible to catch a forward pass. There is only one forward pass allowed per down. Receptions. Teams must possess the ball with at least one foot in bounds for a legal reception. There are no fumbles in flag football, so teams may not return a fumble. For a legal block or rush, offensive players shall not initiate contact with any opposing player to set a block. Defensive players shall not initiate contact with a blocker while rushing a quarterback or a runner. Illegal contacts are when you cannot initiate any contact with hands, feet, legs, elbows, or any part of the body. Stripping or the attempt to strip a ball is also an illegal contact, as is any form of tackling. When teams possess a live ball in the opponent's end zone, it is considered a touchdown. For the men's and women's game, six points is awarded for the touchdown. In correct leagues, male touchdowns are worth six points, 
female touchdowns are worth nine points. After a touchdown, teams may go for one of three options for a try. One point from the three yard line, two points from the 10 yard line, or three points from the 20 yard line. For live ball and dead ball situations, each new possession to start a half or after a score will be awarded to the team in possession at their own 10 yard line. The offense must legally snap the ball within 25 seconds after the referee has sounded the ready for play whistle. In four and four flag football, the team in possession of the ball shall have three consecutive downs to advance to the next zone line to gain. After a change of possession, the succeeding play will be first down for the team with possession. There are no kicks on four and four flag football. For scrimmage play, the field markings are a center line located 15 yards in from each sideline, and the spot from which the ball is put in play will always be on the center line. Now to go over handling the ball. Any player may hand the ball forward or backward at any time. No runner can advance the ball through the scrimmage line until the ball has been touched beyond the line of scrimmage. There are no restrictions under the following conditions after a chance of a team possession or after the ball has been touched beyond the line of scrimmage. Going over passing and receiving, there must be a legal forward pass on every down. The passer has five seconds to release the ball or else the ball becomes dead and the play is over. All forward passes must be initially touched beyond the line of scrimmage. For four on four correct flag football rules, it is considered a foul if a male player runs the ball through the line of scrimmage unless the ball has been touched beyond the line. There are also no open or closed plays in correct rules for four on four flag football. Lastly, we will go over penalties. All five yard penalties will be enforced as three yard penalties. All 10 yard penalties will be enforced as five yard penalties. Defenders are not allowed to cross the line of scrimmage to rush the passer. This will be enforced as an illegal advancement penalty, which is three yards. The mercy rule for four and four flag football occurs in two minutes or less in the game when a men's or women's team is up by 19 or more points or a co-rec team is up by 25 or more points. All other rules follow the nurse of flag and touch football rules book. Four on four flag football games are played at the SRA fields. Practice equipment is available for checkout from scorekeepers at the scorer's table. Game balls are available, but teams may use their own ball if it is approved by both team captains and meets the size requirements. There are some illegal equipment pieces in intramural sports 4 on 4 flag football. All jewelry must be removed prior to play with the exception of medical alert or religious jewelry items that must be secured with tape. All worn jewelry must be pre-approved by the intramural sports staff in person to obtain written approval to play with it on. Clothing with pockets such as shorts, hoodies, etc. is not allowed, nor are hats with hard bare brims. Teams must have both a white and dark colored jersey with unique one or two digit hole numbers for each team member. Both jerseys must be brought to all games. Taping numbers is not allowed. Players may easily use a black or white sharpie marker on a shirt to write their number. Intramurals will not provide jerseys or shirts. Dark colored jerseys must be a similar shade of color across the entire team. Opposing teams must wear different colors. Captains will determine who will wear the alternate color. And if teams cannot reach an agreement, both teams will forfeit the game. White and darker colored flag football jerseys must have one or two digit hole numbers that are unique for each member of the team. The numbers must be clearly visible from at least 10 yards away. Tape is not allowed, however, you may use a Sharpie marker or fabric paint. There are times when the weather does not cooperate and decisions on game status will need to be made by the intramural sports staff depending on inclement weather. We will make a decision by 4 o'clock p.m. daily for the first scheduled game of the day. After 4 o'clock p.m., the game status is determined by the staff on site and games will be scheduled according to the current and forecasted weather. To be up to date on the game status for inclement weather, visit Twitter at BT Intramurals, our Facebook page, Virginia Tech Intramural Sports, 
our website, recsports.vt.edu slash sports, and the Virginia Tech Weather Hotline, which is 540-231-6060. Mark your calendars for the 4-on-4 flag football season. The regular season begins Friday, March 16th. Playoff conflict sheets will be due Friday, April 6th. The regular season ends Sunday, April 8th. Playoff brackets will be posted Thursday, April 12th. Playoffs begin Friday, April 13th. And the championship night presented by Fox Ridge Apartment Homes is Sunday, April 29th. If you have any questions, please see the Intramural Sports website at recsports.vt.edu slash intramural sports. You can find information on sports rules, intramural sports policies and procedures, as well as visit the Fusion IM portal for all teams, where you can find your roster information, game schedule, results information, and you may contact our office if you still have questions. Good luck, have a great season, and thank you for helping to make our Virginia Tech Intramural Sports Program one of the finest in the country. Thank you to our sponsors for Virginia Tech Intramurals, Domino's Pizza for our championship nights, Fox Ridge Apartment Homes for sponsoring our championship t-shirts, and for PK's Bar and Grill for sponsoring the University Sports Officials Association.